the best way to think about whether or not a group of statements or a passage is an argument is sometimes to look at what an argument is not, to look at it negatively instead of positively, to define an argument by what it is not as opposed to what it is. So here's a list of different types of what your book calls simple non-inferential passages, but what we're going to call non-arguments. So these are passages that are not arguments because they lack a claim that anything is being proved. They don't follow the two rules mentioned in the previous video about recognizing arguments. So a warning is a type of non-argument. That's a form of expression that's intended to put someone on guard against a dangerous or detrimental situation. So for example, if I said, watch out that you don't slip on the ice, that would be a warning. But if no evidence is given to prove that such a statement is true, then it cannot be an argument. A piece of advice is another type of expression. This is the type of expression that makes a recommendation about something that's in the future, like a future decision or a course of conduct. If I said, before accepting a job after class hours, I would suggest that you give careful consideration to your course load. Will you have sufficient time to prepare for classes and tests? And will the job produce an excessive drain on your energies? As with warnings, if there is no evidence that those statements are intended to prove anything, then there is no argument. It's just a piece of advice. Another non-argument that you might be familiar with is a statement of belief or opinion. Students also often confuse a statement of belief or opinion for an argument because a statement of belief or opinion could be a thesis statement. It could be something that starts off your argument, but if there is no evidence or any claim that your belief or opinion is supported by evidence or that it supports some conclusion, then there is no argument. So be very careful when writing your thesis statement for other classes. So a statement of belief or opinion is an expression about what someone happens to believe or think about something. So here's uh, something from Deborah Darvick, who's complaining about her servers who have a lot of piercings. She says, when I can read the latte menu through the hole in my server's earlobe, something is seriously out of whack. What happened to an earring, maybe two in each lobe? Now any surface is game, brow, lip, tongue, cheek, nose. I've adjusted to untied shoelaces and pants that make mooning irrelevant. But when it comes to piercings, I just can't budge. Because this person is not making a claim that her belief or opinion about piercings and people who are servers in coffee shops, because her opinion is not supported by any kind of evidence and it doesn't support any conclusion, she's not making a claim of that kind, then it's not an argument. Another type of non-argument is loosely associated statements. Loosely associated statements may be about the same general subject, but they lack a claim that one of them is proved by the others. So if we took this example from Lao Tzu's thoughts from the Tao Te Ching, we could say, not to honor men of worth will keep the people from contention. Not to value goods that are hard to come by will keep them from theft. Not to display what is desirable will keep them from being unsettled of mind. Because there is no claim that any of these statements that are loosely related to one another provides evidence or reasons for believing another one of the statements, then there is no argument. Here's another tricky one. A report, especially a report about an argument. A report is technically defined 
at least in the world of logic, as a group of statements that convey information about some topic or event. So if I said the period of, 18, of 1648 to 1789 was one of competition among the primary monarchs of Europe, wars among the great powers were frequent but limited, France made major efforts to become paramount, but the balance of power operated to block French expansion. From Stephen L. Spiegel, World Politics in a New Era. Those statements could serve as the premises of an argument, but because the author is not making a claim that they support or imply anything, he's just giving information, there is no argument. On the other hand, if I said the Air Force faces ser a serious shortage of experienced pilots in the years ahead because repeated overseas tours and the allure of high paying jobs with commercial airlines are winning out over lucrative bonuses, to stay in the service, says a prominent Air Force official, what I have done is report on the argument that the Air Force official made. So the Air Force official has made an argument. He said, why does the Air Force face a serious shortage of experienced pilots in the years ahead? Well, because of these reasons. So there is a claim that supports some conclusion. It is an argument. But as the reporter, I'm only reporting on what the person says. I'm not making a claim about it, value claims or otherwise. Another type of non-argument is an expository passage. An expository passage is just a kind of writing that begins with a topic sentence and follow, is followed by one or more sentences that develop it. It's the kind of writing that you would have first done when you were in school. So if I were to say, there are three familiar states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Solid objects ordinarily maintain their shape and volume regardless of their location. A liquid occupies a definite volume but assumes the shape of the occupied portion of its container. And a gas maintains neither shape nor volume. It expands to fill completely whatever container it is in from chemistry for changing time seventh edition. Then the, the what we have is a topic sentence about how there are three familiar states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And then the remaining sentences are merely developing and fleshing out this topic sentence. They lack a claim that there is a conclusion that's being come to. So they're not, it's not an argument. This passage would not be an argument. Another type of non-argument is an illustration. And we don't mean illustration in the sense of um, a piece of art or a drawing. What we mean is an expression involving examples, one or more examples that are intended to just shed light or show what something means or how it's done. So if I said chemical elements as well as compounds can be represented by molecular formulas, thus oxygen is represented by O2, water is represented by H2O, and sodium chloride by NaCl, then what I've got is an illustration. It's not an argument. There's no claim being made that anything is being proved, even though we've got a conclusion indicator thus. But this person is just saying, look, this is how chemical elements as well as compounds can be represented. There's no claim. There's no argument. It's just an illustration. It's just examples of how these chemical compounds and elements can be represented by shorthand. Another type of non-argument is an explanation. An explanation is an expression that claims to shed light on some event or phenomenon, which is usually a phenomenon that is accepted as a matter of fact. There's no argument about whether or not that phenomenon exists. We're just gonna shed some light on it. So if I said the sky appears blue from the Earth's surface because light rays from the sun are scattered by particles in the atmosphere, then what I've given is an explanation. It can be confusing because the word because is an indicator word, but explanations are not arguments because the purpose of an explanation is to shed light on something, not to prove that it has occurred. So therefore, it is not an argument. The last type of non-argument is a conditional statement.
you will often see conditional statements later on in the semester as part of arguments. But a conditional statement is an if-then statement. That's just what we call that passage together, an if-then statement. So if I said, if professional football games incite violence in the home, then the widespread approval given to this sport should be reconsidered. You don't need to know that there's something called an antecedent and the consequent, which is just the if part and the then part of the if then statement. But what you do need to know is that conditional statements or if then statements are not arguments. Because in an argument, at least one statement has to claim to present evidence. And there has to be a claim that this evidence implies something. But in a conditional statement, there's no claim that either the if part or the then part is presenting evidence. There's no assertion that any part of it is true. So there's only an assertion of if something, then something. So you'll often, again, see a conditional statement as part of an argument, but it cannot stand alone. You can think of it that way. As an argument. It may serve as either the premise or the conclusion of an argument. It may be rewritten so that it becomes an argument, but an if then statement cannot be an argument on its own. And that is the list of non arguments. <laughs>